have Joanna Bryson joining us. Um, she's at the Hertie School in, in Berlin. And uh, as she says herself, um, she's an expert in intelligence, uh, human as well as artificial, and has been uh, discussing this topic in, in many different venues. Um, as far as I know, you just come out of a discussion on the topic uh, with another country and now joining here. So thank you very much for, for being here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, has been at a bunch of academic institutions, way too long of a CV to, to read it all, obviously. Um, then we have uh, Christian. Um, he's been working on the topic of AI also, uh, obviously, for a while. I know him from I think, 20 years back by now. Um, stayed in academia, went deep into this. And I'm very happy to have him here today. Uh, all of those uh, folks won awards, wrote countless papers. Uh, and um, I think at least uh, some of you have been at the MIT as well, uh, founders in case of Christian of the Passion Center for AI. So bringing it like uh, to Germany um, and happy to have you here. And then last but certainly not least, uh, joining us from um, slightly more remote, um, Hans Oskoreit, um, very happy to have you here as well. Um, again, amazing, amazing CV. I, I read through all of your CVs again yesterday and the day before, and uh, I, it's it's a wonderful rabbit hole to get stuck in. Um, in Germany, in the Research Center for AI, or the Deutsches Forschungszentrum für Künstliche Intelligenz, uh, so we have a little bit of German here today, and also co-founder of, amongst others, uh, Unicepta, uh, all topics of AI, and, and certainly an expert on Natural language, uh, which is uh, at the moment certainly um, one of the one of the uh, crucial pieces uh, when it comes to generative AI, uh, besides others, and he's also been uh, co-initiating and, and steering board member of Liam AI, uh, which is the initiative here in Germany uh, to really bring these uh, models um, well to our geography, so to speak. A bunch of awards, hundreds of papers. Very very happy to have you. Um, I'll run through the panel. We have. 40 minutes, so now 38 left. Uh, that, that fits perfectly to the timing I planned. Um, I see you all, um, and I guess uh, the CVs, uh, people can just search them up. So if we can go to a to wonderful panel, I'll just kick this off. I think the first uh, thing is, I mean, we're obviously talking about generative AI, um, and there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, hype and discussion uh, uh, going on. It's in the media since uh, just a little bit before Christmas. Um, we have been um, all, I think, been able to try it out ourselves first time uh, for many people uh, to actually check and play with AI. Uh, and obviously, also made sure that many people now raise questions and have ideas and are inspired, which I think is good. It's it's certainly hit, hit the ground in terms of a general divide. Um, but as with such topics, there's a lot of hype. Um, and the question is probably like, what, what's hype, what's real? And, and you're the experts. You've been in this for a long time. Um, and a little bit about the challenges, I guess, as well. So I'll just uh, go around and going to do a very classic ladies first approach here in the first round. Uh, so Joanna, um, what would you say is, uh, if, if we look at this topic, like where, where would you say is a, is, a, is a split between hype and reality, if, if it's possible to put this in a, in a short statement? Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> th thanks for the, uh, um, the invitation. I think one of the tricky things about AI is that the um, the split between hype and reality is uh, very colored by everybody's individual experience. And so, uh, I, I mean, it isn't the first time we've played with AI. Everybody who's got their spelling corrected or you know the grammar suggested or whatever, we're immersed in AI now. We, we, we're surrounded by it. The recommender algorithms that determine what we see in the morning, The the, the, the things that make our uh, phone pictures better than we used to be when we had regular film cameras, except for the few of us who are really professionals. Mm -hmm. So it's not the first time we've used AI, but because people are interacting with it linguistically, it's much more like uh, how they used to think it was going to be if they talked to a robot or whatever. And so the, the hype is, um, it, it can, it can, jump on top of that. I mean, it's not like I was just in a, not only was I in a thing, the British thing, I was also in a thing about Africa and crypto. You know, there's hype doesn't need anthropomorphism. Uh, people can get very excited for various reasons of seeing like a potential source of power. Uh, but I do think that the anthropomorphic component of, of language, this, this, this feeling that we, it must be another person there because it talks like a person, but it's just, it, it talks like a person for the same reason that search 
uh, it gives you the web page you were looking for because you know there's a lot of stuff about how people talk on the internet, <laughs> you know. So I, I I'll, I'll pass up uh, any more of my term and see who else thinks there's a way to cut between it. I'll I'll just uh, thank you, Joanna, um, and and certainly uh, not not the first time we play with AI, right? But the first time people really realize it, it, it seems. Um, Hans, uh, I, I know you've been been traveling around uh, quite a bit as well and discussing this topic um, intensively. Um, what would you take? I mean, I've seen stuff, uh, uh, many discussions that say like, yeah, we're we're going to have AGI like, you know, in a week from now. It reminds me a little bit of, of autonomous cars, which we are supposed to have since, I think, uh, two decades probably by now. Um, so what would you say is, uh, where's the hype? What's the what's the challenge that we actually have? Or what's real rather than what's the hype? Sorry. Right, right, right. No, no, I understand. It's uh, you, you apparently just went on mute, Hans. Um, so, yeah, I oh, you were just you were just on mute for a sentence. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, yeah, I understand the hype very much because I was thrilled myself. Uh, yes, uh, uh, no, people who think that uh, so called AGI is around the corner uh, mostly don't even. They cannot even explain exactly what they mean by AGI and which components of AGI they think is around the corner. So here we can be careful. No, uh, we are not close to what the uh, enthusiasts of a AGI think uh, it means being close to human. But uh, no, why do we? Why why have we all the right to be thrilled? And uh, it's not just superficial. It's because we moved from that narrow AI that can do on specifically on specific data, yeah, labeled data trained for special purposes. We moved from that to a system that seems to understand and in one way it understands and in another it doesn't have understanding. It understands in the way that it does something um, according to what you tell, yeah, it can fulfill all these wishes and desires, follow the constraints, uh, but it does it without an understanding uh, in the way that humans would have to understand in order to be able to fulfill these desires. And that is the big, this is the very big thing that you need to understand. On the one hand, it is a huge breakthrough because now the system can do things it has been never trained for. It can do many of these things, yeah. And, uh, and people are discovering more and more things it could do. Actually, every day there are new discoveries, yeah. So uh, what else the system can be used for? So this is a huge jump without any additional training. So the system has some type of knowledge whether we call it now human-like knowledge or not, doesn't matter, but it has some type of huge knowledge and it, uh, it, it can do this. So why is then, but, but I think yeah, it concentrates on language, but I would say the, the, the things it can do, the emerging functionalities, this is not even the main part that it can do now things that it was not trained for. The main part is that it solves one missing big, big gap in AI so far, namely a robust mapping from human input or also input to humans to all the rest of technology. So the more interesting than the standalone applications that it summarizes something, that it translates something, that it writes you a business plan and so on, even more of more importance is the combinations of that together with other parts of AI and other functionalities and other software. Take for instance, uh, let's, uh, let's assume a chatbot yeah, that uh, answers uh, uh, lots of questions. So far, the, the chatbot, the, the knowledge was never the problem because you can put in huge knowledge graphs into a chatbot. The problem was the robust understanding what the human wants to say. If you can map this now to the rest of your system or to a planning system, yeah, then you have managed to bridge a gap that was really a huge gap before. So I think many of the applications are will be popping up in, in, in the future, not by far not uh, what we see right now in, in realized applications is just the tip of the iceberg. 
But when it comes to AGI, no, tell me what AGI means for you. Does it mean uh, what type of autonomy does it mean? Does it mean own goal setting, own planning? Does it mean uh, uh, self-consciousness? Uh, what does it mean? You tell me the ingredients and then I tell you why it cannot be true in the moment. <laughs> then I can explain to you why we can't have it. <laughs> fair, fair point. And thank you. Uh, in, indeed, when I think of AGI and autonomous cars, I would kind of expect an AGI to be able to drive a car. But you know, let's see. Um, <laughs> thanks a lot. And uh, so, so you really uh, saying, you know, uh, the, the computer has got to be more comfortable, right? So it's almost like the jump from you know a command line interface to a GUI. And now we you know get a step more more natural in in terms of conversation. That's uh, the robustness, if if I got that right, Christian. Um, over to you. Um, I know we had discussions about is it actually hallucinations or should it be called differently? Um, but your take on on you know what's what do we actually have? And what, no, are, no, what I think it has been said already quite a lot. So so I'm so I'm what, what you can add? <laughs> yeah yeah. So so yeah, yeah, I, I will add. So so the simplest add-on I can provide is we don't have AGI because the system can't still make or bake any pizza for me. Maybe it may call a service to get pizza, but there's no way of getting a pizza from the system. And I think this is also what is happening and it has been said already that, that you have to, there are at least two different perspectives. So from the perspectives of AI experts, it's amazing um, to see how, how far we get already. Right, it's just the system, and we build a system. And now the system can talk about images and language and think. Though I don't think that it's thinking, but it it can take both modalities and other modalities together. And all of a sudden, the interface between humans and machines, you know, we don't have to adapt that much. And now the machine can easily understand us, understanding again as whatever it exactly means. Um, so from, from that perspective, it is amazing and it's a breakthrough and in particular in, in Germany, it's a breakthrough because finally we start talking about AI again and not about digitalization. Um, so, so I think that's already worth so much. So now on the other hand, if you're not an AI expert, then you start to interpret too much. And this is also supported by all the advertisement that is going on. Like the, the system can now do everything. We, we will talk about other things like uh, maybe they take over the world. And, and so, so people start to simply equate already the machine with something like a human or even superhuman. And I think that's bad and we shouldn't do that. Uh, you talked about hallucination. That's what is going on, right? So you get this nice uh, system that is telling you in full belief that this is true, something that is not true quite often, but that's not hallucination because a hallucination would mean you can see something and you may have seen that already. So technically, if at all, we want to use the term from psychology, psychiatry, it's confabulation because that's what a medic would call a person that is telling you in full, you know, it's true what I'm saying here, but it's rubbish, that's confabulation. Um, but we should be aware. And I think that's all. So, so I'm a bit nervous that the literacy of AI is missing, because if you would understand that this is just generating words, then we can discuss what Hans was saying. How much is that maybe understanding already? Because we, we don't have a strong understanding of what is consciousness. So, you know, they're big scientific questions, but we would not start from it is human like we would honestly ask, what is the system about? And so in that sense, it's a hype. Uh, but it's an amazing hype. It's really, it will enable a lot of new tools. Uh, and there are issues like this confabulation, there's issues like bias, um, there's issue, what, what information do we provide to them? So we were showing that clip may be trained on your face image uh, data, and maybe you don't want that. Um, we have shown that st stable diffusion, of course, has biases, right? You ask for firefighter, we just had an interesting talk about fighting fires, you ask for firefighters, and they are all Caucasian, and they're all male. And so then we were showing how to technologically provide you with a solution so that you get diversity back. So th there's this dance of you know, hype and their issues. We have to figure out the issue. We have hopefully to correct them. And at some point we should discuss whether we want to achieve everything or whether there's a limit to something. Yeah, but it's yeah, amazing yeah. Well, from an AI perspective. Sorry, it's amazing, but we are far away from general intelligence. I think no need to be sorry, but um, <laughs> since you said sorry, it's amazing. I think we're all pretty much taking. Joanna, I, I could see that uh, you had a comment on this. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Now that I've heard my colleagues, I really want to. I'll I'll go there. I, this is Deloitte, so I thought we had to be more business a little bit. But in a way, I think this is really key to business too to understand what you <clears throat> can and can't do. The um, I'm going to dispute a little bit, but I'm not convinced it's a completely robust interface. Mm -hmm. um, it, it depends what you're trying to do with it. So uh, as we just heard, I mean, it's it's true to humans too. So in a way, I, I'm closer to saying, yeah, it's a kind of AGI. If, you, if by AGI, what you mean is human-like, then indeed there's like confabulation that's kind of like human-like uh, confabulation and estimation. And one of the things that's terrified me is talking to some people from very, very well-known large company tech companies who sincerely believe that this thing is now going to solve problems that humans haven't solved before, that they can just dictate, you know, like go, go build a nanobot uh, microorganism or something that will clean up oil spills. And um, it's you, because of the fact that what it's basically doing is interpolating, it's just smoothing between different answers it's found out there and then, you know, regularizing that with what it's learned about uh, uh, language, um, then it can make, that's why you can get this very fluid sounding uh, uh, inter, uh, uh, answer, you know, the, the, that sounds like it, it knows what it's talking about. And half the time it's wrong, or more than half the time, if you're going into an area you can't possibly know about, it will always say the most likely next thing to say, and that isn't necessarily the truth. And so I, I worry, I have been working with, uh, not, not working with, I was asked to keynote to some companies that were, that were working with uh, large language models. And uh, it's exciting the extent to which they are being able to use this technology now to simplify um, having dialogue systems and indeed to be able to understand much more diverse ways of, of expressing yourself. But it's always, always, always critical what the, what the EU has been asking for, of course, that there's, if a mistake might be getting made, that there's someone who can go back, there's a way that you can appeal and basically check the results. So there's a, there, we need to understand that. Um, I, I could go on uh, at length about understanding. I mean, one of the I'm one of the people that wrote the paper that showed not only that there is sexism and, and racism in uh, in in stuff that you train AI that you train on on the way humans use language, but that both the AI bias and the human bias, which it matches, the are our implicit biases, are based on our lived experience. We couldn't tell that until we'd uploaded the stuff into AI before we didn't have that way of checking it carefully numerically. But it turns out that the same sort of sexism that makes you think that programmers are likely to be male and nurses are likely to be female, it's extremely well correlated with the actual proportion of people that are female that, that are in those job categories. So, yeah. um, so to some extent, AI absolutely understands the world and it's helping us understand the world better. It, it's an extension of us. So we understand the world better because we have this AI to the extent that we don't blind ourselves. And then finally, one of the theories about uh, AGI or about AI in general, uh, a lot of the hysteria that people worry about with uh, uh, um, you know, AI taking over the world, some people believe that uh, assemblages of humans are kind of like that. No one really understands how the government works or how a large corporation works. There's no single actor within it that has a full model. And so what we're doing is we're creating much more powerful entities. And so I think we need to worry about some of the things that people are casting as concerns about AGI, not because the machine itself will go off and do these things, but because we really are changing power structures and balances and communication capacities and traveling you know, capacities. So um, I, some of the stuff that people worry about, it would be better for them to redirect those worries towards uh, some of the present understandings and solutions, which are governance. Yeah, well, that's uh, that, that went pretty broad, but uh, that's uh, certainly, um, I mean, uh, according to your background, right? <laughs> um, I didn't warn you. I'm just wondering. It's, <laughs> it's, but, um, but Jan, Jan, that, that's right, it's scary, but it sounds like the uh, one second, it, it, it's showing us a mirror, right? And I think, Christian, that's that's also what, what you, you, yeah, but, but it also just, just one, one brief, just one brief remark. Um, and I'll, I'll let you talk then, but just uh, maybe steering towards that direction. Um, one question that's that's uh, that's certainly up there is like, and, and now I'm wondering a bit more than, than I probably did before, is if, you know, robustness is not entirely clear yet, but it feels like we're going there. AGI, uh, we're lacking a definition to begin with, it seems, right? And um, uh, more complex power structures, how can we use it? But I'll, I'll let you I'll let you talk, but maybe you're going that direction anyhow. No, but, but I think that's the exciting part. So why I'm very happy about this breakthrough, and I would call it breakthrough, is 
because all of a sudden, as I said, people are talking about it and not just the nerds, not just the AI experts. But now I can talk to us. sociologies. <laughs> I can talk to um, researchers in sociology, in psychology, in medicine, everywhere, and they are all happy to discuss. And I think this is very much needed, as Joanna said, because we are changing what a single person, what an organization can do. And this is where we need now this overall view on it. But on the other hand, the, you can use the technology. So you said, you you know, we, we can understand or the machine can understand what is um pornography maybe even on an image. Um, and we can use that and that's what we have done to help to get the dirty parts of your data set out if you're working on these large scale data sets. And that's exciting again, right? So there's always this dual use or dual use to the power of two, or I mean, you, you, I don't know how to call it anymore because you can use what is bad maybe for the good and so on. And that's why we need this discussion that goes across different communities. And that's why I'm happy that this is now starting. But otherwise, we will have industry changing. I mean, we will have new, you can call it just chatbots, but you will have systems that is helping to run more complicated machines empowering people to run these machines and production lines. We will have people understanding what do I have to get in order to increase my, I don't know, loan for, for a student, you know? And, and you will have machines that give you at least an idea where to go, what form do you have to fill out? Maybe they can even help you with filling out your text form. And so again, in the end, it's the balancing, how far do we wanna go and who is in, in the end doing or making the decision? And that's where not just the technical people can talk, but it's also not just sociology that can talk and we need the discussion. But it's amazing. And it's not just a bit of text. It's images, it's generating images. And do we want to kill some of the illustrators in terms of their job? Do we want to empower them? There's all these dual, 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 as I said, dual to the power of two discussions that we have to, to go now for. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you, you You picked up on, on some industry industry pieces, right? And um, just uh, lo looking at Hans, I know you've been traveling around the world on this topic uh, physically at the moment, um, certainly some ideas as to what's what's happening outside of Germany, um, but maybe towards this way, what what where can the current uh, status of generative AI maybe used in the industry and, and along with this, what would we need? What, what would we have in Europe maybe already or in Germany in particular maybe? Um, and more particular, what what will we need to to get that really working? Love to have your perspective on that. Seems you're on mute. Ah, yes, perfect. I was mute again. Sorry. Um, yeah, the problem in Germany and Europe is that we have to rely right now on the best models that are done in another part of the world. Yeah, and in this case, yes, China also has some very good models that are closer to the Americans than what we have in Europe. But actually, right now, uh, nowhere else in the world do we have the, the, the capacity. And, and, and right now, industry uh, is worried in uh, Germany quite a bit. Many companies came to us or they are coming to big software companies and uh, uh, asking for um, models that they could use fine-tune with their proprietary data and uh, that they can feed because they are not allowed to ship their data over the Atlantic uh, to, to the uh, big existing American APIs of uh, the GPT versions. Yeah? So we, we, we have a real problem in, we, we have the need, industry is further already in discovering the needs and, and, and willing to try out things, even if not by far not all industrial applications have been recognized, but um, uh, we, we cannot deliver. Right now, it's very, very tricky. Mm -hmm. So there are a few companies like Aleph Alpha in Germany, or uh, Hugging Face is producing some uh, widely accessible models, yeah, or uh, or, or stable diffusion, but this is not uh, not not one of the big language models. But uh, we have we have a real problem, and uh, Europe really needs to do something very very urgently for doing it, uh, because the need is there and the problem has been seen. 
Thanks. So yeah, the, the need for for urgency that's that's indeed um, and the the you know sending data to somewhere else is I think it's a good thing that that's not necessarily allowed, but certainly it is a problem when there's nothing here to use it, right? Um, maybe yeah, Joanna. We don't have our core problem. Yeah, our problem in Europe is that we uh, we don't have uh, any type. Uh, we don't have an open AI. We don't have a Microsoft. We don't have a Google. We don't have a Meta. We have an SAP, but Oracle is not doing uh, big language models. Why should SAP? Yeah, so this is not their 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 their, their part. So we, we we simply don't have these institutions, and either we create something, yeah, or we empower, or we work together. We need to come up with a solution. Yeah, even China now has at least four with uh, Tencent, Alibaba, Baidu, and Huawei. They have at least, oh, and even ByteDance has a very good model too. They have at five five big models and they have created the Beijing Academy of AI with public money. So mm -hmm. they have recognized this, they will have uh, solved the problem. But what does Europe have? Yeah, Europe uh, has very, very little in, in that sense. So uh, it's, a, it's not just an urgent problem, but it's a, it's a real deficit. So thanks. Yeah, and indeed, there's a drone. Yeah, so I, um... I, I am trying to decide how humble to be about this because I'm sure Hans has seen a lot more. Personally, though, uh, I am very excited about Hugging Face. Uh, I think what we have to contextualize this, don't forget that the EU is on the edge of, uh, it was, it should have by now, in fact, by April, and now it's been postponed a few months. I finalized the text of the AI Act which is like incredibly lightweight regulation. You talk to people from actually regulated sectors like banking and they're just laughing at the AI Act. It's like not a big deal. And yet the US is in a complete panic over it. Not, not the East Coast, not, not Biden and his administration, but the West Coast I just have some bizarre, they haven't been used to paying the slight penalty. I think that, uh, yes, there's these giant models that, you know, that we don't have the same scale of. I think we're gonna be able to do most, the vast majority of what's actually useful with the hugging face model. Um, I, I think that we're gonna get better and better at doing this in light, light, lighter weight uh, uh, systems. I've seen people, you know, uh, there was a woman, uh, uh, like a, a free, freelance philosopher built a model on ChatGPT3 I'm sorry, GPT-3 uh, based on Dan Dennett's writings, you know, one person's writings. And it was sufficiently good that uh, Dennett's friends, including me, could not tell uh, what, whether they were talking to Dennett or to, to the chatbot, right? So I think that, you know, if you believe that like somehow you're gonna discover things that aren't known to humanity through having a larger and larger, larger model, then you can get up. But I think it's like a lot of gorillas prodding their, their chests and, um, and they're, they're trying to scare people into thinking that they can't invade this space. Also, we do have uh, OpenAI. The original OpenAI was, of course, called uh, um, DeepMind. Um, but of course, that's no longer the EU because, again, what I'm most worried about political uh, things that happen, Brexit, uh, uh, possibly interference through social media, things like that. So the governance things are a big deal. Um, but anyway, I, I think... Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, oh, but anyway, the Microsoft is definitely gonna claim at least that they're gonna, they're, they're gonna be very happy to sell us models that will, <laughs> that they're gonna claim we're fully domiciled here. Google claims that nobody can know where all the bits are. Uh, maybe if you're a little more careful with your DevOps, you can. I don't know the, the answer to this yet, but this is the kind of thing that we're legislating is the capacity to go out and do the procedural account uh, audits to see, you know, what are you guys doing? We know how to do cybersecurity audits. We, are, we should be going in and saying, where, where is this data? And I think, you know, I think a variety of people will be selling us these products from all over the world. I did, I did some research, uh, I had a paper come out actually now two years ago called, uh, is there an AI cold war? Because a lot of people were saying that the EU needed to roll over and play dead because uh, otherwise we would interfere with the US capacity to build AI and then China would win. And, um, and so we actually went out and saw where are the patents happening and how large is the market capitalization companies that are building uh, AI. And it turns out it's a huge, the digital is a huge leveler. There's stuff coming from all over the world. The EEA is not the, and we looked at the EEA because it's a subject to the GDPR. So sorry to throw a lot of acronyms, but basically, you know, these awful EU regulations. And it's not, it's not far behind. In fact, in some years, I've got data that's not published yet, but we, we looked over a bunch of years now. Some years, the, the EU is doing better than China 
on both patent and market capitalization uh, for if you look at all the little companies, because we're a well-regulated space, we don't have these giant uh, autocrat forming uh, monopolies. Um, then, uh, that, but also Japan, you know, also India, also lots of countries. There, there's just, it's actually basically, you can predict how well a, a company's digital, a country's digital, uh, region's digital economy is and their AI economy by how, how well their economy is doing. AI is sort of becoming the, the new paper we write everything on. So I, 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 I am not, I don't have the same uh, panic. I, you know, again, I could be proved wrong and we all need to be modest about these mm -hmm. things, but I don't have the same kind of product about a uh, panic about large models. Yeah, thanks. And, and that's almost uh, kind of um, pointing at the next panel where, where we're going to discuss this uh, a, a lot further again. Um, but yeah, thanks. So, so the regulation doesn't have to be seen only bad, right? Because there's certainly things we regulate, like, I don't know, cars, um, where, where well, regulations certainly turn out people, good. But we need to have yeah. cars to, you know, do something with them, I guess, um, if, if I want to stress it. If I could take another turn really quickly. The people that were at this, so it was actually literally called the European chatbot meeting, although it was in Edinburgh. <laughs> But, but it, was it was a whole actually people, not, not chatbots meeting, right? It was a whole bunch of EU people there, and they were people that used dialogue systems to connect to, like banking, you know, and 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 credit cards, and and also for government, you know, trying to help people that are getting into debts. All those those uh, dialogue systems you use, um, and they were saying, like I said, the the amount of regulation. First of all, the amount of regulation that, that that that's being labeled on on the digital by the EU is not that hard compared to their, you know, what they're having in automotive or in, in finance. But secondly, or medical, there were medical people there too. But but secondly, um, the when they go through these procedures, they do cut catch errors in their own products, and it is helpful. So yes, back to the slowing thing. It was slowing down sometimes and checking and making sure you're doing things well. I mean, governments want their companies to succeed. The whole reason they do things is to try to help sectors flourish, right? And, and so quite often the, the checks that they ask for are where you basically, the only reason you do those checks is so you can defend uh, and show that you've done due diligence and defend against liability. So if something does go wrong, the government will bail you out, right? Um, unless yeah. you really did violate what everybody knew was bad practice. So we're just yeah. trying to bring ordinary product law into the digital sphere. And I think once we do that, everyone's going to be benefited. I mean, Googlers and Microsoft people are walking up to me after the GDPR. You know, beforehand, they were saying, oh, we're going to leave Europe. Like, yeah, right. There's too much money. They're going to leave us. But then afterwards, they're going, oh, wow, it's like a single API to 28 countries. You know, like we're making a lot of money. It's like we're a trade block. Of course, we're trying to help you make money. <laughs> what are you thinking we're doing? You know, so Good point, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, thanks. And I think indeed, uh, you know, the government's trying, wanting their companies to succeed. I think that's a, you know, if, if I would have to condense it to a few words, then, then uh, that's, that's, I think, a very, very good point here. Christian, uh, I, I see you almost biting your nails. Uh, I know you don't do that, but. Um... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think we have a lot to contribute and we should still worry a bit. So I, wh while I see what you're talking about, Joanna, I'm, I'm a bit nervous that. You know, if the other countries at some point say you're, we are not sharing our models anymore, then we are screwed. And so in that sense, we need a platform, we need the infrastructure, we have to be part of this game to some extent so that we can put what our biggest uh, asset is, our values, our diversity into this game. Because as you said, Joanna, this is the big point. And I think our mindset, because we have the European Union and we have also UK, let's see Brexit, but they're still our friends. So I think we are used to the idea that we have to accommodate different opinions. And I think that's what we are to a large extent talking about for these very general large language models. And so this mindset, as I, I think it's a big, big plus and we should go for it, but we need infrastructure. And I don't understand, um, you know, whenever I say, let's go for something like an Amble or a CERN or whatever for AI, people say, oh, my goodness, there's the energy. Yeah, sure, there's the energy, but typically it's the energy for a big model that can, can be reused, not the energy, but the model again. So I, I think, yes, we are working as a community to, to reduce energy consumption, but it's not like everyone is training GPT-4 or whatever. So I, I'm a bit less nervous there. And as far as I know, streaming and video watching videos and Netflix is maybe still consuming more energy. So I think we need the infrastructure. Then I wanted to say, uh, while I love 
hugging face and I should put the disclaimer uh, I've published with them, but I'm also an investor into Aleph Alpha, so I have different hats on, on but hugging face is not a European company. I'm, again, I'm sorry, I love them, but if they decide tomorrow to close down the marketplace, they can close down the marketplace and then we are screwed. And so this is why I don't understand that both companies, but also governments in Europe are not pushing the idea of having a European marketplace and infrastructure. If I see that CERN is costing more money, if I see that having now, what is it? Uh, we have this mission for the moon or whatever, again, more money. But what is currently happening, uh, no money. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. And I don't understand on the one hand, we are talking about AGI taking over the world, but then we are not willing to invest enough money so that it's not taking over the world if we really believe that. So, so it's really strange to me. And that's why my big message is let's invest. We have the people. I mean, Björn Omer, one of the people behind Stable Diffusion, uh, he is from, from Germany. He's from Europe. If you check out who is driving major parts in Silicon Valley, they are also from Europe, from Germany, from France, from UK, whatever. We have the human brain power where we need the silicon power. And that's where we have to put much more in there so that we are safe in a sense and safe by being open. I We should also go for at least open models that can be reused and then maybe companies that can have closed models for whatever downstream tasks. And so that's by the way, was one of the question in the QA, uh, language models per se are not solving many tasks. It's either the human or the downstream task where again, the human is then training based on the, on the embedding. So that's the other illusion. It's not, they also don't have a free will for now. It's not like they decide tomorrow to not do anything. It's still us humans. And then if you see, who, what, what was the breakthrough? It was to take a large language model and now take extra human data, namely preferences. What do I like more? And that was giving the breakthrough. So, so far the human is always the breakthrough. So, so that's amazing. And if there's an area, there are many other areas in Africa and so on, but we should value humans. And that's what we can do in Europe. Let's go for it. Let's sell it to the world. I, think that's I, I see, I see for, sorry, I, I see four nodding hands. Um, Hans, you, you kind of kicked this this off, which now took a little bit longer, um, but I certainly would like to have uh, uh, give you a chance to to quickly jump in on that um, and close the loop, so to speak. But, but can I just, because yeah. Joanna was- uh, Sorry, I, I, I didn't want to cut you off. Very really that... quickly, and then you have all the time. Um, but Hugging Face is still a company. It's a North American company. So they give us for now the, uh, uh, the models. But if they change their business, um, we don't know. So, so I'm just saying I, I like them. I think they're on a great mission, uh, but we still simply don't know. And I just wanted to highlight they are not from Europe. That's all I wanted to clarify. And we should have something like Hugging Face Europe, or we can call it Aleph Alpha. Now, again, my investor idea, whatever, but we need to move there. And, and I don't understand why SAP having money is not putting money into the market. What about Bosch? What about Siemens? What about Deloitte? Push us, give us the money. We can do it. We have great people here. So Hans, sorry. And uh, now it's your your turn. Yeah, no, I fully agree with everything you you you, you said. I see it from the industrial side. Um, we have in my startup used foundation models very, very early on when uh, I mean as early as we could because we knew about them very early. And and we see how much it can achieve. And the problem right now is really the availability of European models. So we don't have the European languages covered well enough. Uh, we don't have the security that we can fine tune models with proprietary uh, industry data as people, as industries want to. They would start doing that uh, tomorrow. So no, they're, they're, it's clearly a huge deficit right now. And, and, and let's face it also, the... Um, the experience, um, the experience. So the, all these big models could never have been uh, developed first in a company like Hugging Face or maybe the Stanford Together model 
where people try with minimal resources to do something that others need much bigger machines for. No, you need a certain you need a certain surplus in in power and infrastructure for experimentation, and that's how the new thing comes into the world. And if if we have already American universities are very disadvantaged, that's why they had this committee in the U.S. that now uh, de demanded uh, several billions uh, to to upgrade the university infrastructures that were there for the compute infrastructures because. Uh, is simply the next breakthroughs we will be decoupled from they will not come with a with a with a with a with a um, um, initiative a uh, non-profit initiative of people who do it on their on their own gpus and on a small machine and can prove that they can live with with, with very few resources they will come from very well equipped uh, infrastructures and if we stop and if we are decoupled if we are behind we will stay behind and fall behind even more things will be done elsewhere but not anymore in europe yeah they will be done yeah. in the us and in china but not in europe so i insist on that being true and that whether we now with our legislation uh, improve our situation or make it worse that's a complete different question yeah so that i also have an opinion on that, that i will not uh, so that that's a different thing uh, but but right now we we need there are new highways built right now. You read in the newspaper, yeah? So the highway building is continuing. You, you know the, the training uh, GPT-3 model is uh, maybe the same as a 50 kilometer highway. And the energy consumption of the highway is bigger by a, a factor of 20 or 30. So, and, and, and there's no way that this, uh, highway construction will pass the parliament very easily, but we do not, we, we, we are not going into the future. Yeah, we are, we, are, we, are, uh, we are sacrificing our chance to participate in the next generation of AI when, for instance, the generative models will get other data like business process data, movie data, uh, action data, all of that, when that will grow together, we will be out of it because we have no way of dealing with it. For instance, combining autonomous driving with foundation models, we cannot do it. Oh, yeah. So oh, before being so passionate about it, I think I, I, I completely disagree now that a hugging face or so will solve your problems. Yeah, so I don't think so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, Al. Uh, we, we're one minute over time, and I think that's that's uh, that's tells about the passion, so to speak. Um, I will uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I think I had like 20 more questions. Um, but um, hopefully meet another time. I think there's an event in Berlin coming up where there's a good chance we, we sit down and then probably can, can move this on. Just to quickly summarize like what I understood is, um, you know, we in a way, we, we have what we need. Well, I mean, the, the people we have, um, the industry wants it. It's not that they are afraid of it. Um, we should use bureaucracy rather than, you know, probably push against it. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, as it, you know, sometimes sounds. Um, uh, but we kind of, I, I would almost say like, we need just to believe in ourselves and then move forward, right? Like not wait and, and sit and, and see what the others can do. And I think um, part of this is, is education, lots of misunderstandings. And I hope this panel helped a little bit.